there it is. Hi everybody, hope you all are well. Uh, today is a super awesome day. We're finally gonna show you the part one of our solar install. Uh, so this is a complete disclaimer. Uh, we had to make lots and lots of decisions and had to do lots and lots of planning for the solar system. So what we're gonna show you over these like two or three part series uh, is just a rough overview of what we actually did. So keep that in mind. Jenny and I have the full intention to actually start a separate series on our channel uh, regarding solar uh, because there's so much information monocrystalline versus polycrystalline, soft versus hard, how much wattage, like all that other stuff. There's a ton of information that I had to learn over the course of approximately 9 to 12 months. And so I'm going to be teaching you all of that if you're interested in it. Let us know in the comments below so that we can get that weekly series started as soon as we can. And I hope it will help some of you guys with your off-grid solar installs. Now that that's been said, welcome to part one. The panels that we ordered were actually 150 watt monocrystalline panels. To attach all the panels together, I needed to order aluminum L channel. So what I did was I went to a local steel supply company and they had the aluminum L channel and I got the same width as the width of the solar panel frames. And what I did was I actually put the solar panels on the floor in the exact way that I wanted them to sit up on the roof and I measured them to make sure that all of the L channel that I would have cut at the steel supply shop would be exactly measured perfect. After I got everything all measured and cut from the steel supply store, I wanted to show my dad kind of what the plans were. We got it out there, I showed him what we did, and he actually brought over his drill press so that we could go through and just take a 3 8 inch bit and go through and make all the necessary holes. The way that we decided to do it was lay it out the way we wanted to and then use a permanent marker and we marked on the top holes where we wanted to cut and then we took that bit and drilled through those holes and then we put everything back together and so now those top ones had holes in it and then we took the sharpie and then used that hole to mark another hole on the piece below that and then we did that until we got down to the actual frame of the solar panel and then just drilled those by hand. As you know, RVs are notorious for leaks. So the last thing I absolutely wanted to do was cut a hole in the roof of the RV or drill a hole into the roof of the RV. I don't care how much dicor you put on it, how much butyl tape you put on it, it's still gonna leak and it's still gonna uh, take maintenance. So what I wanted to do was just completely bypass all of that. And I did some research and you may think I'm crazy, but I found this cool tape called 3M VHB tape and if you go on and look at all the reviews it's amazing stuff you have to make sure that you have the right surfaces to connect it to but we had an aluminum roof and we had aluminum brackets to attach to the roof so all we did was just prep the surface really good and get that tape put onto both surfaces and we've been on the road for four months five months now and it has been rock solid and I am so glad we don't have extra holes in the roof to clean the surface first, you just need standard rubbing alcohol and a clean towel, and you just clean it in the same direction until you can't see any more dirt. Then what you do is you take a green scotch pad and you just scuff up the surface and all in the same direction. Then after you're done scratching it and it's nice and shiny and, and scratched up in the same direction, you're gonna take a, another clean towel with alcohol and get that cleaned off. As soon as the alcohol evaporates, you're ready to put that tape onto the surface. And it's really just, you just apply it and make sure that you roll it and, and push that tape onto the surface so that it, it fully cures to the surface. After we got all of the tape attached to the six brackets, we let that sit and cure for a little bit so that that tape would actually fully cure to that one surface first. While the tape was curing, 
we decided to take the framework that we had already built for the solar panels and we basically had to find out where we were gonna put those brackets on the roof of the RV. It's kind of hard without having the solar panels and the framework up there already, but we didn't want to have the hassle of taking all of that up and then taking it back down when we were attaching those brackets. So we just decided to use the cardboard cutouts that came with the solar panels and specifically cut those to be exactly the same dimensions as what that framework would be on the roof of the RV. It was just a lot lighter to work with and a much better decision for us to do that. What we did was we laid out that cardboard and we had to mark where those brackets were actually gonna go. So we took the brackets up and got a Sharpie marker out and we marked exactly where those brackets were gonna go. We realized when we would scratch the surface with the scotch pad, it would actually take those Sharpie markers off. So what we decided to do was take a little X-Acto knife and make a scoring mark exactly where that bracket would sit so that even if we did take the scotch pad and scrape off the surface of the aluminum, you'd still be able to see where that bracket would go. We got the surface prepped on the roof and we then took those brackets and attached them to the roof of the RV. That's it. It's down. It is down. Woo! <laughs> what? <laughs> Look at that. It's, it's, it's part of the roof now. It is. All right, Yay. celebration dance. Let's see. <laughs> no, I'm not dancing on this roof. What are you talking about? <laughs> My initial thought was when I attached the two pieces of framework that I built for just the single panel itself, as well as the three panels combined, I thought that bolting it in three or four different locations would be enough to hold that and make that sturdy, but I was absolutely wrong. What we ended up doing was the same type of aluminum channel that we used for the brackets uh, to attach to the roof. It was actually a four inch aluminum angle and it was much thicker. I think it was like a quarter inch thick. So it was a much more sturdy and thick uh, bracket that we could use. And it actually worked out really well after we got everything all drilled out. The last thing we really needed to do was go through the two pieces of solar panel and we used longer bolts to attach those together. So not only were we attached at the framework pieces between the single panel and the three panels, we were now attached from the tops of the three panels to the side of the one panel. Good job, Dad. Yeah, let's try this. Once we got everything attached, as far as the brackets went, all we needed to do was get the framework all bolted together, and then we just took all four panels in a single unit, and we just decided to hoist it up onto the RV. We are about to put the solar panels on the roof. Ah! It's going to be awesome. Uh, really nervous. Really excited though. So, here we go. I think we would do really if two people lift, one person on top, yeah. I can continue pulling while you get up to your height. We would be on each edge there or each side. Heat's up there. Yeah. 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 I know. <laughs> Feels like you're on the surf, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the solar panel unit by itself was about 100 pounds or so. Each panel was about 24 pounds, and then when you add in the aluminum framework, you're looking at a little over 100 pounds for the entire unit. So it was kind of tricky to get up because it's a lot of surface area and just kind of bulky in general. We just got some scrap pieces of wood and set those underneath the framework so that they would sit up almost exactly the height that we wanted them to sit while they were bolted into the framework. By attaching all the solar panels together in that really sturdy framework, we essentially made a single solar panel unit, a 600 watt unit with 12 volts that would be easily tilted one direction or the other. In order to maximize the sun exposure for our solar panels in the winter months, 
a lot of times you need to tilt them at about 50 degrees. And since our panels were all in one giant unit, they don't really make those types of mounts so that you can actually tilt them. So I had to completely design one from scratch. I'm telling you, planning is the hardest part. The execution is the, is really, I mean, if you plan right, look at that, it's like picture perfect. It was success. Yes, it is. Babe, look what you did. All right, smile. That look, it feels like aluminum. It feels like, it looks like aluminum. Is it? Does it smell know. like aluminum? 